Hey, I'm Nathaniel, the person behind Film For All, and today I want to talk about art. So as I was saying, today I want to talk about a little theory I came up with about art. Now I'm not sure the world needs any more theories about art, but I can't seem to get this one out of my head. So here I am, ready to over explain myself like so many other videos. The best way I can possibly summarize this new theory I have about what art is, is that art is a fractured mirror. We've probably all heard the phrase that art is a mirror held up to nature. This is, of course, a quote from William Shakespeare and probably one that we heard sometime in high school while reading a sonnet or a play. And that is half of the equation of what has given this quote so much staying power. It's the simple fact that Shakespeare said it and that he's taught all the time. But I think to just focus on that aspect would also be to miss the point that this quote is so succinct and something just feels right about it. And the more I dug, the more I was like, eh, I don't know if this quote quite works, or at least it doesn't quite work in our modern age. And this got me thinking about how I could tweak this quote to come up with something new that is just as succinct, just as powerful, but a little different and a little bit more accurate. But before we get to my new definition, which may or may not be good, we have to first understand the biggest issue that I take with Shakespeare's conception of art. That is very simply that it lacks clarity. Look at the trees swaying in the breeze here. The image of them reflected in the mirror is clear, united, and easy to understand. It moves just like we expect it to, and there's nothing here that we wouldn't expect to see. The theory of art as a mirror held up to nature holds up quite well when we look at any number of portraits of Mary and Child from the 16th and 17th centuries, at least at face value. These works clearly reflect the times and climate in which they were made, times which were ruled by Christianity, its stories, and its rules. Not to mention that these paintings are realistic for the most part, or at least strive to be an accurate representation of the world. They strive to be mirror-like. Of course, there is some nuance here that would reveal the mirror metaphor to not be perfect, but it's close enough for government work. But what if we hold up the mirror to our times, our faces, and our society, and these are the images we see? Each of these pieces are so different, so complex, and viewing art as a mirror cannot explain these differences or how we are supposed to view them. This is my vision of what art is, and it is by shattering this mirror that we will be able to build a theory of art that is easy to summarize, yet complex beneath, and accurate to the vast world of art we now live in. From my perspective, the mirror can be best defined as the sum of all human knowledge and experience that reaches for the truth. Now, of course, this definition does require believing in a concept or some form of truth. The issue here is, and where it gets a little bit tricky, and I promise to stick with me for a minute, it's going to sound bad at first, these truths cannot be scientific. Now, I know this sounds anti-science, and science is great, I'm not anti-science at all. But science deals with, if we look at the scientific method, what we can measure, what we can test. And just by that sheer factor, it's not truth. What we talk about here, when I say truth, what we're talking about is something that is beyond this. It does not change. No matter you believe in it or not, you accept it or not, it is there and it will govern the universe. This is where it gets even trickier. Because how can so many people, at least in the past, believe that truth is subjective? If that's the case, this is where the broken mirror comes in. Because we aren't dealing with something that perfectly reflects what is out here, what is the truth. We're dealing with something that is fractured, shattered, broken, and horribly scuffed. In this example, my hand is a truth. Let's say it is the truth of love. Somewhere out there in the cosmos, this truth is solid in form, unchanging and clearly understandable. In the mirror that is art though, the image we see is fractured, separated, and sometimes wholly unrelated, or at least seemingly so. This is why truth can seem so illusory and subjective, as we are playing with broken pieces. So if the mirror is the totality of art attempting to demonstrate truth, or at least reaching for it, then what exactly is the hammer? This is individuality. 
This is our perspectives, and this is what shatters the mirror. Let's say for a minute that you could live every single second, every single second, same choices, same everything as someone else. You still wouldn't be able to know who they truly are. And if we apply this concept to the mirror here, what we end up understanding is that each of these gaps between these chunks is the separation between you and I, separation between our perspectives and our understandings of the world. Now, that being said, what exactly are the fragments then? There's two ways to understand them. Firstly, you can take the fragments to be individuals themselves. These are the separation between each of us and our perspectives. But of course, art is often a little bit more complicated than that. And the, the edges here aren't mo merely defined by ourselves, but by the societies that we live in, by the people that helped us, the perspectives that they gave to the project. This is especially true in something that is a collaborative medium like film, where each artwork is not defined merely by my taste and my perspective, but by everyone that was involved. Now this has two important purposes or ideas that come out of this. Firstly, art is not self-expression. The goal of art is not to just look at these edges, to just define these edges. That is what someone ought to do to learn themselves, learn what they are. But art ought to reach for something out here, to try to find the truth, to try to reflect that, to try to clean its surface, to try to find out how to shift itself to help everyone reach for a better life and a better understanding of who they are and the world around them. To make something purely out of self-expression, which I feel is sort of common or was common in the last 10 to 20 years and has maybe started to go down some, is to do something like this. Take a portion of the mirror off that ought to be reflecting me out here and turn it on itself and hold it in front of the mirror. Yes, I'm seeing my perspectives, I'm seeing exactly what I am, but I'm ultimately doing is only catching very small glimpses of truth then. I'm creating an infinite feedback loop of sorts. Secondly, this view of art as limited by our perspective easily explains the disconnected variety of art that exists in our world. We all have our limits and are simply working within them, making do with what we have, what we've experienced, and what we see. Now, before we move on, let's do a quick summary before going over some questions that this theory and this conception raises. So, the summary of art. Art is a fractured mirror, like the one you see before you. It is fractured by individuality, because, very simply, we do not all have the same perspectives or visions or cumulative acquired knowledge that allow us to see everything the exact same and put all of the pieces together. Now, the mirror itself is the sum of all human knowledge and experience, or the sum of all art that is reaching for the truth. Now, some of you may have noticed here that there is a vague similarity to Plato's theory of the forms. It says, out there, somewhere in the cosmos, there exists an ideal chair, that the chairs we have here on Earth are just mere replicas of something far, far greater, something out there that is just the perfect thing to sit in. Now, this conception of art that says that the mirror is reflecting truth seems to be very similar. But in reality, it's quite different in two major ways. Firstly, I do not believe that art reflects the true chair or anything like that, that it doesn't reflect a true form of something very simple and sort of silly. That sounded demeaning. But rather, it reflects something like love, something overall, something overarching that governs everyone. Love exists. Everyone knows that. Everyone has experienced it, no matter how hard they try to deny it. Secondly, Plato's theory carries with it some negative connotations. The fact that art is sort of a mirror-like, or in this fact, a, in his uh, conception, a reproduction of a reproduction, because we have the ideal, we've made a chair, now we painted the chair, and now we're really removed, that we have actually removed ourselves from truth each of those steps. Rather, this is a little bit more of an Aristotle perspective that says the mirror instead directly reflects truth. It is the best we can do. It is the closest we can get. Its separation is not an issue, but rather just a fact of life. And this is what we have to deal with. The first question that came to my mind while constructing this theory is, is all art a direct reflection of truth? So far the theory I have constructed has only really better defined what the mirror is and how breaking it accurately represents the variety of art and human experiences that make it up. But I haven't fixed the clarity issue, or at least explained it away. We still haven't explained how an image such as this one displays the truth. So perhaps the better way to look at the mirror is as a dirty mirror, a mirror that is scarred by bias, clouded with information, and sometimes only focused on specific truths. 
is if we are completely honest with ourselves, no matter how talented we are, how smart we are, how much we've read, how much we care for those around us, at the end of the day, we're still human people. We still have our blind spots, our preferences, our biases, and our lack of knowledge and experience of other people. This will end up leading us to make mistakes, to reflect an odd part of truth, an odd part of the truth that might be ugly, might be unsettling, might be out there, but a part of the truth nonetheless. Let's place ourselves in the spectator's position for this next question. How does this theory impact our consumption of art? After all, as a spectator, we are looking at pieces of the mirror each time we consume art, but we aren't looking at it from that overhead perspective of truth. Our goal as viewers, then, is to gain perspective, to be able to see more of the mirror from a higher position so we can see more of truth's form, improving our life and those around us in the process. To gain a higher perspective, or to be able to piece things together then, we need to view all types of art in every medium. For every nation, artist, and medium brings with them unique pluses and minuses that will fill in where gaps would otherwise exist. We aren't looking to explain and clearly define each mirror piece though. I can't go and trace this outline of this artwork or what it really means to be you. What I can do is search them for the clear spots, for the polished spots, for the spots where I can clearly see my truth out here, my hand. This is important for two reasons. Firstly, it does away with shallow interpretations. A lot of modern film criticism can get caught up in what something means, what it represents, how does this ending change what we think of. But at the end of the day, this is searching to nail down something that is impossible to nail down. This doesn't mean we can't search for themes, we can't acknowledge them, but they aren't the end-all be-all. They don't justify or clear everything else up because what we're searching for is something beyond plot, something beyond symbols. Secondly, it adds value to every single piece of art. Composition matters in painting and the composition matters in film, editing matters in film, sound, composition and exposure and photography, all these sort of things matter very much. But what each of these is, is a polishing of the mirror. It's a polishing of the artwork, a polishing of the form that allows us to see truth better and not let us get distracted. That being said, we're not searching for that whole mirror, that whole polish. And this adds value to so much artwork that something can be bad or mid or have its slow parts or its bad moments, but there's something great there. And now with all of that out of the way, it's time for a bit of metagaming. If this mirror is all of art, then this video also lies within this mirror. After all, it is striving for the truth of art as well. The theory is a part of the mirror, but it is also a way to contain all of the mirror. Too often, we place theories of art into competition with each other, pretending that each party has some sort of unique knowledge, some sort of divinely inspired view of art, that the other party just doesn't understand or is missing. But these ideas don't have to be mutually exclusive. In fact, we can view them very much like the mirror, in the way that perhaps we're not all reflecting some one thing that someone just has to figure out in their brain, but instead we're all reflecting the same thing, just different pieces of it. Now, I know this gets a little weird here because if art is something that reaches for truth and is the way we experience truth, but then art sort of becomes a mirror in and of itself and isn't it a truth, and I would like to posit that art is some form of a truth. I like to think of it as the key to truth, or a true key because there's something special in art, and I think we can all agree on this, that there's something special in art that touches us, that is able to move us, reach us, and change us, like other things like simply reading facts or numbers or sheets can't do. And if it can impact us all universally, then that universality has to make it some form of a truth. I don't know what form, or if we can really define that, as this part of the theory is perhaps one that could use a lot more refinement, so art is a dirtied, fractured, scarred mirror. It is separated by our individuality and reflects truths. And of course, this video is in and of itself a reflection of a truth. It is just another piece of the mirror reaching for something higher. Now this being said, and since it is just a piece, I need your help here. This is just an idea I cooked up in my brain over the summer, and I need to know if it's a good one. I need to know where I fell short, where I can improve, what ideas it, it brought to your head, where you think you have an idea or a lens that could help refine this theory, or prove it wrong and tell me that I'm really stupid. Whatever it is, leave a comment, send it to me over email, send it to me on my Instagram, however you get your ideas to me. 
And if you're wondering, hey, he made a video about art and there's maybe you're one of the first people to see this and there's nothing else on the channel. You're wondering what's next? What will it continue to be sort of art focused in general? Is there a more specific field of interest? Where is this going? And in general, I just would like to say that my idea from here on out is to start shifting more toward film. That is my background, what I'm good at, what I really love is film analysis, criticism, and theory. So if that sounds interesting to you, like and subscribe, send me those ideas, and I hope to see you around in the future. Until then, I hope you have a lovely time and a great day.